Hi, my name is Gar, and I live on 80th Street. And so I'm right here in the middle of Montevideo. I volunteer for Meals on Wheels, which is an organization uh, that's nationwide, actually. But uh, here in Portland, we serve meals five days a week to people who can't get out of their homes or are housebound or uh, otherwise in need of some sort of support for their, for their food. Uh, something else that I do with regularly is the uh, Smart Reader Program, Smart being for uh, our grade school children. And actually, uh, they meet five times a week. I only meet one time a week, but the Smart Program is five days a week over here at Vestal School. And we just have our own little kiddos that we read books with. And they read the book back, or they tell us what they want. Do they want to read the book by themselves, or do they want me to read one page, or them to read one page? You get the idea. It's and kind of fun. Vestal's right there, and a nice little short little walk. <laughs> yeah, and you can hear all the little ones going home right now. Then the rest of my time is pretty much spent around the house and projects. Uh, I have the entire yard as a garden that's uh, continuously expanding and so in 2012 when I moved here uh, it was just grass all the way around and uh, it wasn't, wasn't uh, regularly, it was regularly maintained but it wasn't all the same type of grass. So I've since put in a, a dry creek bed and trying to cater into butterflies as you'll see. Monarchs in particular although we haven't drawn any this year yet. We hope to sometime in the future. And then I've got house projects going on continuously. Uh, just finished up a basement project. Now I'm up into the kitchen on another project up there. All right, cool. Can you show us some of that? Yeah, you bet. Let's walk around. Let's do the outside. Watch your step. <laughs> There's thimbleberries here. That's a this is a native plant here, the thimbleberry. I just put this in last year and it took right off. And then there's one of three blueberry plants that I put in, and this was a salvage blueberry plant there. This is that one up in the front was a salvage blueberry. Where were they salvaged from? Uh, from a yard across the street. Oh, okay. And then uh, this is uh, elderberry, which the song Elderberry Wine was coined after this one. Here in the background, you can see some of the milkweed. This is what draws monarch butterflies, and I'll show, show you uh, budded ones over on the other side of the house. So this is a dogwood tree, which has been failing, and so this ugly looking mass of stuff that, that I ha you have here, that's actually uh, uh, clover, and clover is to establish um, a stronger nutrient system, so that's all just going to be cut back and laid down right there. Okay. And the strawberries here, these just came from a friend, a couple of just right next door, he gave me a couple of strips of strawberries and stuck them in the ground and took right off. So here's a bigger stand of milkweed here. Take a sniff of that, Colby. <laughs> that smells really nice. Isn't that nice? <laughs> I wish I could convey that better through video, <laughs> yeah. but it does smell really and nice. I, I mean, I couldn't believe how nice that and Honeybees all over it. Honeybees do like it. Oh, speak, speak of the devil, there's a couple yeah. there. <laughs> and so this is called milkweed because uh, it actually does have, let me take one of these bigger leaves here. See it? See the milk come out? Oh yeah. So that oh. milk is toxic to uh, other little animals. So the monarch will, will lie, uh, will land here. And then while it's eating the leaf, it'll be laying eggs on the bottom of the leaf. Uh -huh. And so that when the eggs hatch, the, the little fledglings, uh, they get food right away oh. and they're eating the leaf. And so most of the uh, predators for the monarch butterfly wouldn't, wouldn't touch it. In the evening, I've actually seen a big black uh, bumblebee like that one. They'll just swirl around in that, They'll like they're swimming in it. And I've actually seen one when yeah. it was up at night. Some of those bumblebees will stay right there in the flower all night long. In the flower, <laughs> camping How out. funny. Yeah. So I was lucky enough this year to get a couple of different colors of poppy. Oh, there, there was one rolling around inside the there. Yeah, and they'll just spin around on their backs. <laughs> like that one there. <laughs> There's more berries here. This is a white berry, there's a cascade berry, and the, the third one is, and then there's more blueberries, 
and some rhubarb. I just dropped the light so I could paint. All the trim is out in the garage. I clean that all up. Wallpaper all the way around. Wow. Yeah. Down to the, down, down to the floor there. And down to the floor here and all the way around. The edging that they had before was just this it's rolled linoleum. And they glue it on. You can still, still see some of the black glue that was used for sticking the linoleum on before. That's just junk. The original house had uh, just very simple you know, boards like this. And as you'll see down in the basement, I'm just duplicating this down in the basement. And, mm -hmm. and that's going to be the same thing over there. It's just, uh, just little one buys. So this basement, now this, this entryway here, this was a major project. Mm -hmm. There was a, a paneling all the way around here. And when I took the paneling off, there were holes in the walls. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had the same plaster guy that plastered this. Mm. He was in here four years ago plastering this. Okay. So he's good. Yeah, yeah. And I like him. And so he was able to match up the old the old texture. Plus, he set up a scaffolding and got way up into the ceiling. I mean, because this was really, really bad. And the stair was right straight down. Now it's got this little curve in it, but it's a legal length on all the stairs. Legal width, they're, they're supposed to be at least 11 inches. And the ones that were on there before were like seven inches, and uh, that's not much of a stair. So that wall there was uh, paneling, so all the paneling has been tore out. It's the same paneling that's on that back wall back there. The baseboard down here now matches the baseboard up there, so it's not gonna be that stick on stuff anymore. And this is the room that I just finished here recently, the laundry room. Uh, this wall here was all open with the wiring all exposed. And it was, it's still exposed in the ceiling. I'm not sure what I can do about that yet, but anyway, that's done. So I just finished this last night. I just finished the last paint job through here, and, and now I'm going to be going up into the kitchen. That's why the fixtures are hanging from the ceiling, so I can paint the ceiling first. Oh, and here's all the glass. Reminds me I should probably wash those myself. <laughs> Never think about it, sure but the light in. <laughs> I refinish this bath. All the windows do open. All the frames are. This is uh, it's quite dusty now, but uh, this is a solid piece of hickory. Yeah, there's a little specialty wood store right down here on Cooch and Eleventh Avenue. Uh, yeah, they sell wood in any direction you like to get it. Specialty woods. Leave all the doors open a jar a little bit so the cat. He wants to get in every room and <laughs> inspect everything. And if the door is closed, then he just sits there until I get out. That's that's going to be that's that's going away. Right now, it's it's so the cat can get up into that window. So he gets up in this window here. <laughs> this that's what place. the ramp here is for. <laughs> that, that Old cat for ramp. My, yeah. So huh? yeah, he picked up on that. Right away, <laughs> right? He likes that picture from my great granddaughter Sage. Last time she was here, and she's coming again at the. In a, in a week. You drew this four years ago. Well, I first heard about the co-op. It was uh, shortly after I moved here to Montevilla, because <clears throat> I've been associated with, with the co-op pretty much since I, I moved here in 2012. And uh, the, it was the yard signs over my next door neighbors. When I moved to Montevilla, it was, I landed on uh, 76th Street, just north of Burnside, and there was a couple of my neighbors, one right across the street, and unfortunately I've forgotten her name, but they had actually, they hosted a dinner one evening. One of the persons that goes out and gets things done, give me the task and I'll try and get her done for you. Currently I'm kind of the yard sign guy. And uh, that comes from having signs available to stick in their yard the minute that they join. I've always been associated with co-ops. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, some 60 years ago when I was small, uh, my parents always belonged to a credit union. Okay. I still belong to a credit union. And uh, I have I've really haven't ever belonged to a bank. So I've always been credit union oriented. So I'm of the persuasion uh, that uh, the closer we are to the source, whether it be where we store our money or where we buy our food, it's always always the best. And so when I go shopping, I look for locally sourced foods. 
and uh, sometimes it's difficult to find a lot of things that are locally sourced, but I'll stick with uh, foods, primarily fruit, that are locally sourced. So my preference would be to have my food, to be able to buy my food, all of it, locally. It, well, I try not to be too much of a... Um, you can only talk to your friends and neighbors so much about the food co-op, but uh, at least <laughs> every one of them has heard me talk about the co-op at least once. <laughs> yep, there have been a, a couple of members that uh, have joined as a result of just chatting to them about it and encouraging them to uh, get together and, and uh, participate more closely in the community by establishing a co-op for us. But for the most part, uh, they're all pretty much members already. Uh, I mean, sitting right here, kind of across the street, there's a member across the street there, and there's another one out of 324, and there's another member, and a neighbor right next door here. Well, they're, they're members, so there's quite a few members around. I must say that the most fun that I've had with the co-op is what the co-op is all about, and that's food. And so the, the really big introduction was to me where the co-op was going to their annual breakfast up here at the Methodist Church on uh, 80th and Pine Street. And some of you have probably been there and uh, it'll just go to show how well food is used in processing community. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Join the volunteer team. We need some volunteers. We need more volunteers. It would be nice to be able to uh, cover the rest of Montevilla streets. We're just kind of picking away at them slowly. If we have more hands on deck, more people going out, talking to their neighbors about it, having literature, and uh, promoting the co-op, and telling them that, you know, passing the word that it's, it's within our grasp to have our own grocery store within walking distance, right by our own beer store down there, Bonneville Brewery. <laughs> Thank you very much for watch watching and uh, happy eating.